How you doing, family, friends? Today I want to talk about uh, a moment in history that is touchy for a lot of people. Um, some people up north might recall this event, and then, but you have a lot of people in the south that's never heard of it. Um, this event happened May 13th, 1985. That was a Monday. Um, Osage Avenue in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That was a very, very tragic day, and it's a day that should be etched in all of our heads and a day that we should never forget. But on that Monday, some tragic and horrific events occurred that uh, we, we need to talk about, fam. Friends, we need to talk about what happened, what occurred. We cannot move forward if we don't understand our past. We can't move forward. We have to understand the things that we ha have overcome and whether or not did we overcome. When it's brought up, it's like it happened yesterday. I've lived with it all my life. We had on uh, the radio on KYW and we start hearing about the cops amassing. On May 13, 1985, after a long standoff, Philadelphia municipal authorities, police dropped a bomb on a residential row of houses. The Osage Avenue home was the headquarters of the African-American group MOVE, which had confronted police on many occasions since the group's founding in 1972. As the smoke rose from 6,221 Osage Avenue, Philadelphia residents watched through their windows or television screens in a state of stunned disbelief. Their city had just bombed its own people. On the evening of May 13, 1985, long-standing tensions between MOVE, a black liberation group, and the Philadelphia Police Department erupted horrifically. That night, the city of Philadelphia dropped a satchel bomb, a demolition device typically used in combat, laced with Tovex and C4 explosives on the MOVE organization, who were living in a West Philadelphia row home known to be occupied by men, women, and children. It went up in unextinguished flames. Eleven people were killed, including five children and the founder of the organization. Sixty-one homes were destroyed, and more than 250 citizens were left homeless. In 1978, there was a confrontation between the MOVE organization and the city of Philadelphia. Some of the MOVE people were arrested and sent to jail. Their children had nowhere to go. Miss Louise James, whose brother founded MOVE, allowed those children to come and live in her home so that they could be cared for. We respected that about Miss James. We had on uh, the radio on KYW and we start hearing about the cops amassing. With permission uh, from the police, uh, went down the street uh, to the house uh, and uh, talked with uh, Ramon Africa uh, through the uh, through the screen door. I just asked, is there any possibility that you know we might negotiate this thing out so that there's not you know a bad outcome here? She made it pretty clear that uh, they were prepared to deal with whatever uh, might uh, come next or deal with the police and that uh, they were committed to a certain, uh, they were taking a stand. We figured they were going to try to do something. So we took ourselves and the children down to the basement, which is the safest part of the house. and was in accordance with our strategy for protection. At 5.30 this morning, warrants were to be served on the MOVE members. So we uh, eventually took up a position in the rear of the 6200 block of Osage, nearest towards Cobb Creek Parkway, and we heard the police commissioner make an announcement. What did Commissioner Sambor say, do you know? He was telling him to come out. Could you hear him saying that? What did Demona say? She was just arguing and stuff. What we intended to do was to create a diversion on the roof of the move compound. That diversion was to pour a large amount of water onto the bunker itself. 
to obscure the vision of anyone that may be inside the bunker and prevent them from seeing the insertion teams as they made their way down Oshage Avenue. The water was just pouring, pouring, pouring down on us in the basement. And I mean, this was not for 10 minutes or half an hour. This was for a long time. We started down the alley. You got down the alley approximately 15 or 20 feet and the shooting started. And then we hit tear gas, which at that time wasn't supposed to be in a plane. So we had to stop and put our gas mask on. It sounded like a lot of firing coming in front of us. And it was uh, the shots being squeezed off. And uh, it was a rep rapid shooting. We couldn't wait to get down that alley and make that turn into the house because we had no clue where it was going from. What we we're going to do is we we're going to go into the house next to move. Members of the bomb squad would reach a hole into the basement and onto the second floor of 6223. The purpose was to breach a hole, put a pepper fogger through the wall, leaving the first floor for an avenue of escape for the move people. What we wanted them to do was to come out of the front of 6221 Osage and surrender. The police next door had a 50 caliber machine gun. Uh, people, when I called the office and I said, listen, they're using a 50 caliber machine gun. They said, you're crazy. I said, no, I'm not crazy. I have fired them. And I know what they sound like, and I also know that when it goes off, it shakes the floor in the house that I'm in. At one time, as a result of an explosion in the back bedroom of the house that we were in, that was our explosion, um, we breached part of the wall. Officer Miller got the pepper fogger started, and I remember standing next to him when he pushed it through the wall. It had a, about a four-foot pipe. He got it up, and he got it running, but he only got it so far in, and he hit something else. And the conclusion that we drew at that time, that they had walls inside the walls we have strategies to help protect us you know we know how these people come we realized that we're this is this was not what we anticipated they didn't blow three inch holes in the party walls they blew off the whole front of our house and then we took a position in the in the front bedroom of 6223 move would be on, to our left as we were looking on the Osage. The tear gas started coming in. We got the blankets and they was wet and we had them in the book and they was wet and then we put them over our heads and started laying down. Well, there was a short law, very short law, and then that's when the shooting started. The cops on either side of us and in the back and across the street in front of us because they just took over people's houses. Well, while we were standing there and the pepper fogger was working on the party wall was a result of automatic gunfire in a semicircle. That wall, the other side of that wall, would be the move house. And there was a bunker above us also. At that time, under those conditions, we drew the conclusion that move was shooting through the walls at us. So we all took refuge and we all fit, almost, into a closet. And uh, I remember Klein, he, run, he didn't quite make it in. He was rubbing his leg. What happened is some of the rounds had hit the wooden floor. It was a hardwood floor, and the rounds flew up and hit him. Found that later on, but that time, under those conditions, we thought he was hit. So that was the first time I really thought, other than going down the alley, I ain't going to get out of this closet. I, I really thought that was it for all of us. According to police, they shot over 10,000 rounds of bullets at us within 90 minutes. Then there was a long, long, where, you know, nothing was happening for a long time. And then, that's when the, the cops sent for a state police helicopter. Did you at some point conclude that the plan had failed? I think at uh, about uh, 4.45 or 5 o'clock, uh, I had reached a conclusion that we would probably have to wait overnight that was at the point in time that Leo Brooks called me up. Would you tell us what you heard the managing director tell the mayor? To the best of my recollection, sir, and he told the mayor that we had we were recommending and you and that I had recommended that the best way to go was to use an explosive entry device to blow a hole in the roof so that we could insert gas in through the roof 
and also to use this device to hopefully dislodge the bunker because it presented a danger to everyone and that we intended to use a police helicopter. I just keep thinking about those children. The children. And there's a lot of stuff that happened that led up to that day, which I'll cover that at a later time, but I, I really want to try to spark a light bulb in a lot of uh, your head. So you can go look up this event. Osage Avenue Massacre. Look it up. The information's out there. Um, we got com computers in our pockets. We have access to computers and internet in our homes, in our cars. We have to, there's nothing wrong with um, listening to music and watching movies, but the time has come where we can't devote all of our time into things that don't make us grow. Things that's not gonna make us wiser. That time, that time is gone. We need to utilize our time wisely. When I first uh, learned about this tragic event in, in Philadelphia, because I love Philadelphia. I have been to Philadelphia several times. I love it. It's a, it's a beautiful historic city. It has a lot of history, a lot of history there, and I love history. But when I learned of this uh, event, it touched me. It touched, it touched my soul that something like this would happen. And they're not being the history books. They not teach us what happened that day. How, how did things get out of chaos so bad here in America? Here in America. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Um, nothing they done should have rewarded something like that to that magnitude. Um, this country was founded on principles and values that should be shared abroad. By us having access to technology today, we should be able to look back quite vividly and measure whether or not those founding principles that this country was funded, founded on has been applied abroad. The generation of people that's living today has that ability to do so that previous generations didn't. That's amazing. That's Totally amazing. Uh, I told a few generations before, people that grew up in the 60s, 50s, 40s, 70s, we can pull up videos today and pretty much see with our own eyes what they was watching on TV, what they heard on the radio, what type of cars they drive, what type of foods they ate, Pretty much everything about their lifestyle, we can look it up today at the touch of a button. Poop. Just that quick. So we have to wake up and think and use our head and use this technology to grow humanity. To grow humanity. To make things better for the future generations. There's no way in the world a future generation should have to face the same atrocities that previous generations faced. Shouldn't, shouldn't have to today. Shouldn't have to. We should be civilized enough to sit down and come up with some type of a conclusion and plan so the future generations don't. Um, we got to do better. We all got to do better. And you do better by educating yourself. You do better by educating yourself. I'm going to have to put out a lot of um, love video shorts today because whenever I rile up my energy by watching things that are, are really, really saddening to me, it, it do kind of put me in a sad space. 
I have to boost myself back up with positive love videos and, and music. Um, and that's frequency. Like I say, I try to tell people about frequency. But that's what I'm going to do. Um, but there you go, you know. I just wanted to share a moment in history with my family and friends. And there you go. It's a start, you know. We got to have information abroad for us to really have something good to talk about, you know. I would hate to be the only one talking about uh, events and people in, in, in past times and be the only one to know about the, these events and people. So I'm doing my part and I'm, I'm going to try to share as much as I can, as frequently as I can, so that people can know of these uh, past events and past people that I feel that's of importance to our survival um, and plan for the future. So till next time, this is Leroy with Talks with Leroy. I love you. Y'all have a nice day.